Good. So we have 3 squared minus 3x plus 8. And what they're asking us to do is let's call this a function. Um, and what they're asking us to do is describe the nature and the number of roots. All right. So there's a couple things we need to remember about our roots. And <clears throat> our roots, you know, remember, guys, when we're looking at a quadratic, it's going to be like our x-intercepts, where our graph is going to cross the x-intercept and where our y value is going to equal 0. But there is one special formula that we worked on to find the nature of the roots. Now, actually, first of all, if I wanted to solve for x, that means let's say set this equal to 0. There's three, rule, three ways that we've talked about so far in this class to find our values of, of x. Does anybody remember them? You could what? You could isolate the variable, but in this problem, can we isolate a variable? No. So yeah, you can't, so you can't use the square root method. That was the, that was the method we used to isolate. So beside, besides the isolate, but when we have multiple methods, Austin, what you're looking at is one is factoring, another one was quadratic formula, and the other one was completing the square. Completing the square, right? Now, we could use all three of those to solve, but now when we couldn't factor them, or, and we didn't want to complete the square because it had a lot of factors, we always, you could always default with the quadratic formula, right? Always default with the quadratic formula. And remember, the quadratic formula said x is equal to opposite, opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Now, that's how we find the values of x. But what was nice and important about the quadratic formula is there's this little part under the square root. And what we said is, I can actually, if I just figure out what's in the square root, that will tell me what my zeros are. Are my zeros real? Are they rational? Are they imaginary, complex? Are they irrational? So just by looking at what this value is, which is under my square root, I can now determine the nature and how many roots I have. So let's go ahead and do this. So when Chase is doing this, he needs to remember that um, the standard form is, remember, ax squared plus bx plus c. So therefore, I can say that a equals 3, b equals negative 3, and c equals 8. Does everybody follow me with that? How I labeled that a, b, and c? Yes? So on your quadratic formula, you guys can remember, OK, so now I, d I just need to figure out what this value is. All right? Because on whatever this value is, that's what I'm going to take the square root of. So I do negative 3, because that's my b squared, minus 4 times 3 times 8. So negative, negative uh, 3 squared is going to be 9. 4 times 3 is 12 times 8, which would be 96. 9 minus 96 is going to be a negative 87. So therefore, under my square root, I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative 87. When you take the square root of a negative number, you produce what type of number? The square root of a negative number is going to produce what type of number? A what? Is it real? It's going to be imaginary, right? Anytime you're taking the square root of a negative number, you're going to have imaginary roots. Now remember, when we take the square root, you're going to have plus or minus. So for this answer, you're going to have two complex roots. All right, you're always going to have two complex roots unless this number is 0, then you'd only have one root. But every single time, you're always going to have two complex roots or two real um, rational or two real irrational. But it's always going to be 2 unless that number is 0. Then it'd just be 2. Then it'd just be uh, um, one real root. OK? So to determine that, you're going to want to use your, this is what we call the discriminant. So you're going to want to find that value. OK? OK. Good talk.